Hello friends, welcome back to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. And in this career oriented video, we are going to talk about another very important question that I received a lot. Uh, is what about uh, the career in life science, any other subject you can choose, career in life science, in academic side or in industrial side. It's very very important to compare between the two. So which will give you more respect, which will give you more money, which will give you the best lifestyle. Uh, after qualifying your masters and PhD and what qualifications do you need to get the uh, these academic jobs or to get the industrial job we're going to talk about all this in this video so stay tuned and watch the complete so first things first we're going to talk about the academic line in the academic line, the process is very straightforward. There is no much change uh, in the recent, like last 10 years, there's no such changes. And the line goes something like this. You need to do your graduation. Then you need to do your post-graduation, preferably in the same subject. Remember that to get into an academic life, you need to do graduation and post-graduation, preferably in the same subject. So if you have microbiology in BSc, you should take microbiology in MSc. Do not change your stream then goes into the like uh, preparing for like application for phd for that you need to qualify either institutional exams uh, normally conduct by sars and uh, like uh, tifr ncbs nii iisc those exams or csi ugc net or simply ugc net or icar net icmr net any of these exams and they will be eligible to do phd in different institutes in india either it is funded by the csir funded by dbt funded by ugc doesn't matter you will be eligible to do phd which is normally on average is a five years course afterwards you are eligible uh, for lectureship now to be eligible for lectureship you need to qualify ugc ls or csir ugc ls lectureship qualification that is a joint csir ugc test you need to be able to get a score that is required to qualify for ls or lectureship if you qualify csir net grf you are automatically given grf as well as ls so you can do phd and after phd you can also apply for lectureship in universities or in institutes so this is the genuine way so bsc three years msc two years five years and phd another five years 10 years now in different places the phd time frame may vary from five years minimum to take up to seven or eight years in different institutes it depends on your workload and type of work and your lab and your pi and so many things so after doing all these things now you have 10 years invested in the same field now you can apply for the job of a permanent position india always gives you a permanent position that's a good thing about india because in outside of india there are tenured position tenured position means a person uh, given the responsibility to teach a college or university uh, will be given a tenure of 10 years or five years after that tenure that person's whole uh, you know uh, the track record will be uh, further reconsidered then they will be given another five or ten years of tenure but in india once you get the job you get it till this point of time once you get the job you got it and you have a lifelong job a secure job that's why academic career is always a lucrative career and it takes long duration 10 to 12 even 15 years of your your hard work but still it will pay off and the start point the salary is 50,000 to 60,000 rupees per month that which is a decent one in India and then it will increase very soon reach 75 to 80,000 rupees in very few years so that's what very beneficial about it if you get a permanent tenured job but you know there is a downside of that as this is not a tenured job you may see in your university or college there are teachers who can barely teach but still is there once they qualify once they join they are still there they don't need to be monitored they are not taking the classes they are not explaining well they are just dictating in the class and you need to just pay them their rent and fees everything they because literally they are not being monitored they once got the job they get it for lifetime that's why tenure uh, regions are really important i want to hear your view about the tenure system india there are a few places in india they are like in the government indian government is also thinking of uh, introducing tenure system and uh, for phd this system is already started in few labs and for the teaching purpose also they are thinking of 
in uh, insert in the tenured uh, positions i think it will be better for the education system in india for the higher education system for india anyway so this is the idea of uh, the academic career and which is straight forward and once you reach there you will get good decent salary job and the lifestyle is also good you have a plenty of you know uh, off days you know you have uh, every single day although you have eight hours job duration but for that you need to take three to four classes of one hour so it is a good lifestyle based job you are going to get and the respect is also huge compared to any other person in this field now let's move into the second one which is the industrial job now not everyone can get into the academic career you know because academic career demands more time frame of your life and also academic career demands you to qualify csi net icm or uh, dbt jrf and all these exams which are difficult to crack not everybody can crack that exam as per our uh, our total percentage is only 1 to 2% people qualify for csi net exam every single year so during that thing you know if 1 lakh people apply only 1000 people qualify for it so rest of the 99000 people fail to qualify you know they in, go into a phd or any other stream and they generally opt for the industrial based jobs now if you talk about industries what are the industries there are plenty of industries that may require life science students particularly biotech and microbiology biochemistry and uh, also the biopharma students but particularly the two big industry one is the biopharmaceutical industry and the second one is food processing fmcg industries so these are two big industries which are private industries mostly uh, which are present uh, government industries are also there fci is there uh, fd uh, are like food and drug administrations i mean food drug sa safety that is there as well as the fci is there so both this are there drug research institutes are there which are government but rest are all, uh, all are the private now the thing is about the this industrial job is that industrial job at, as a fresher it's very difficult for you to get into an industrial job okay because industry need uh, research experience industry need experienced people into that there are few industry hire uh, the freshers and the salary is very low now it's 20000 to 35000 uh, once uh, the starting of the job uh, now 20000 15 to 20000 is the start point of most of the private uh, uh, industries now industrial job can be of two different type either it's wet lab or dry lab wet lab means where the process is production based and everything is a practical based means you need to do a lot of production either it's a production of food production of beverages production of medicines or there are dry lab dry lab means where you invest your knowledge uh, for clinical data management clinical trial Uh, pharmacovigilance these are the dry lab where you think about you know data analysis and doing most of the office based job office based work so either of this job you know they provide different type of benefits and there are different type of draw drawbacks in production uh, unit you have a product like job opportunity as in the production house you have a job opportunity in uh, r&d you have a job opportunity in quality control and quality analysts four different positions in a in a dry lab you have always you know data analysis position jobs and the manager position jobs so these are the things that you can go after graduation and masters you know it's very difficult to get a job after graduation in this field so you need to do at least masters to get a good job but again masters is two more years so people think about masters when they think about phd and if you're not thinking about phd in a long run then you can obviously do a diploma courses or advance any sort of application based course after your graduation which are known as post graduate diploma so after doing a graduation you can do diploma in different things you know pharmacovigilance or clinical trial clinical management patent management services then you can go into either dry lab and wet lab services through that there are different tests and examinations take place like bcil where uh, they will recruit after qualifying that they will recruit you into a 6 months in a paid uh, internship course in different labs in different uh, industries in india and once you do the job for 6 months if they like your job if they think like you are well set to work there they can absorb you there so there are some you know bridge courses government are doing uh, to place you in industry but it's very difficult to place but again as i told you what are the salaries in this uh, uh, private sectors 
as I told you, the starting salary is very less. Now, in pharmaceuticals, if you uh, get a position of R&D, which is not usually given to MSc candidates, which is given to only PhD candidates most of the time. Even if you get to MSc candidates in R&D, you'll get a good salary. The salary will start from 35,000 to 40,000. But for the other QA, QC, those portions, the salary are quite, quite less. Now, this salary may vary from place to place depending upon the average sal salary of that city or of that area. So a salary in, for example, in India, in Bangalore, it will be more, uh, Gurga will be even more compared to the salary in Kolkata, for example. So this is the idea of salary that you're going to expect. But again, uh, think about the job responsibility. There will be 11 or 12 hour job responsibility in most of the cases. And those will be targets, target based jobs. In many cases, there will be huge stress at the beginning. And the more you are going to stay in this field, you are going to get more uh, important, more, you know, contacts. And through that, you are going to get into new positions. And then you will be a leader, team leader position or management position. Then you can get very decent salary with, you know, obviously, with a better lifestyle but again the stress and the amount of work you need to put will be more so that's about the industrial thing so if you don't need, if you need to do industrial job then obviously follow graduation you can do masters as well to get a higher chance you can do also uh, you know uh, mba to get into any of the management positions one more thing I need to mention is that regarding this, you know, as I told you, PhD is necessary to get into a permanent position of teaching in universities and colleges. But people can go into university and colleges and, and can teach there without a PhD degree as well. It is found out that without a PhD, you can, you can do that as well. But the position is not permanent. In that case, you will be given a temporary position and as a para-teacher position, but the salary will be half of what a permanent position teacher is going to receive so sometimes you need to do a complete full-time job and receive a half salary sometimes you'll be given a limited time job even less salary that will range from 17 18000 rupees to 25 to 30000 rupees per month in that field so that's all about uh, the academic career as well as the industrial career after any of the life science field in india so if you are from biotech or microbiology or any of this life science field in India, now based on this video, you can choose any of this based on which suits you more. Not everybody can go into the academic career because it needs more time. If you don't have more time, if your family cannot support you with the money, with uh, you know economy, then obviously you should go for the industrial jobs. So that's all about it. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to our channel to get more videos like that. Thank you. Bye.